Hey there, South Carriers. Mr. Hanson here with the next math video for you. We are talking about inequalities today with writing and graphing inequalities. So what is an inequality? Well, it's a mathematical sentence used to describe situations that have more than one possible solution. Okay, and this happens sometimes in math. So we have our inequality symbols here. We put less than or greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal to. Okay, so when it's less than, the meaning of that is x is less than, or another word you can might see is fewer than, and we can put any number here, let's just put three. So if you have an inequality where it says x is less than three, on the graph here, I have my number line three, four, five, two, one, zero, et cetera, et cetera, okay? <clears throat> I need to now graph this to show all the possible numbers that it could be. So if it's less than three, what I'm saying is that x can be any number less than three. So it could be two, could be one, could be zero, could go into the negatives. It doesn't matter what it is. But what it cannot be is three or greater. So I'm gonna put an open circle around three and draw an arrow to the left, showing that all the numbers to the left of three, which are less, are the solutions for that. So is it open or closed? It's an open circle and the circle does not include that number three, all right? Next, greater than. If I say x is greater than three, I can also say is more than three. Now, the same situation here. I have my number line three, four, five, two, one, zero, et cetera, et cetera. Again, it's an open circle because what I'm saying is it can be anything greater than three, but it can't be three or less. So it could be four, five, six, et cetera. It could be 25, hundreds, it doesn't matter. So again, it's an open circle. And again, it does not include the value of three. Now, when we get to the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbols, it does include that number. So that's gonna look different when we graph it. So this would be written as x is less than or equal to three. So I'm gonna use three every time here. So here's three, four, five, two, one, zero, et cetera. I'm gonna close that circle because it could be three or anything less than that. So again, the arrows to the left because those are numbers less, less, excuse me. So now this time it's closed and it does include the value of three. Same thing here, x is greater than or equal to, I'm gonna have a room here, and I'll say again three. So again, it's gonna be a closed circle at three, but now this time since it's greater than, it's gonna to go to the right of three. And that means again, it does include it and it is in fact closed. Now, if it's not equal to, x is not, equal to three. If it's not equal to three, then that means it can be any number except three. So here's three, four, five. I just put an open circle on three and I can draw arrows both ways because it can be any, it does not include, it can be any number except for three. So if x is not equal to three, anything but three. When this doesn't happen a ton. So let's get to our examples. We have to take an inequality, write one, and then graph one from the word problem. So example one, the speed limit is 70 miles per hour, okay? So we're gonna call S for the speed limit, and it's 70 miles per hour, which means it can be 70 miles or less, right? So that would be less than or equal to 70. So here's my number line, here's 70. If we go by five, 75. 65, etc. It's going to be a closed circle at 70 and anything less than that. Okay, so that's how that goes. <clears throat> Second example, you must be taller than 48 inches for the ride. So Y is going to be the person you. <clears throat> taller than means it has to be greater than 48 inches. So it says taller than 48 inches, which means it has to be bigger or greater than 48. So here's 48 in the middle, 
That's a 49. On that side, 47. It's an open circle, and it's anything greater than 48, which is to the right. Okay? You're going to try these ones on your own in your notes. All right? Because now we're going to talk about compound inequalities. An inequality that combines two or more inequalities with and or or. So we look at these examples. We have x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 5. So I have my number line here. Here's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's going to be a closed circle at 5 because it's less than or equal to. It's going to be an open circle at 2 because it's greater than. And if this is going to the right, this is going to the left, they connect in the middle. So basically, it can be any of those numbers in the middle there. And means it goes together, or means it goes opposite directions. So if I have w is less than or equal to negative 2, which we do have negatives on the number line, or w is greater than 1, again, it's closed circle at negative 2, goes to the left, open circle on 1, and it goes to the right. Okay, last couple examples here. To write two-step inequalities, we have to make sure that we're using the cube method. So we have eight less than the product of negative three and a number is greater than negative 26. So the product means negative three is being multiplied by a number, we'll call it n. And then we're taking eight away from that and saying that it's greater than negative 26. Okay? Next example, Naomi has at most $60 to spend on clothes. She buys a pair of jeans for $22 and the rest on t-shirts. Each t-shirt costs $8. So $22 in jeans and t-shirts, we'll call it T, so we have 8 here, excuse me, times T. And at most means it can't be anything bigger than 60. So it has to be less than or equal to 60. 22 plus 8 times T, number of t-shirts she buys, less than 60. That's it for this video. We'll see you next time.